Yo, my name is Benjamin and in this video I'm very excited to introduce all new effects in Framer. We're extending our family of scroll and appear effects with four new ones, hover, drag, loop and press. And you can combine these to design all new interactions. So let's jump into our demo project and have a look at what's new. So in this playground project, I have cards for each new effect that we can go over. I'll start by selecting the rectangle in the hover card. I'll click on the effects panel and here you can find all new effects. And I'll go ahead and select the hover one. And this brings us into the redesigned effects panel. We've simplified the UI allowing us to add more properties for you to customize. As you can see here, I can tweak properties like scale and rotation, and you get a nice real-time preview on the canvas. These are the properties that the layer will animate to on hover. You could also add a 3D rotation or an offset X and Y respectively. And we have a few new properties like fill and shadow that you could work with. But for now, we're keeping it to scale and rotate. We can also customize the transition. And let's go ahead and give that a preview. I'll scroll down to the card. And just like that, we've added a hover interaction. You can still use components with hover variants as well. But with this release, you're no longer forced to use components if all you're after is a simple hover effect. Let's move on to drag effects. I'll select the badge and add a new drag effect. Here we have a unique set of properties that all relate to dragging. I'll keep freeform and snap back to yes, and I'll tweak the transition just a little bit. And let's just go ahead and give this a preview. And there we go. We have a nice bouncy dragging interaction. Because the freeform property is set to yes, we can drag the layer anywhere. There are no dragging constraints. And because we kept snapback set to yes as well, it means that on drag end, the layer will animate back to its original position using the transition options we customized earlier. Now you might have noticed this already, but with this release, we added a little layer panel indicator highlighting any layer that has an effect applied. Next, let's have a look at my favorite new effect, the loop effect. I'll select the first knob of our sliders here. I'll add a loop effect. Now by default, this rotates something infinitely and so I'm gonna reset rotate to zero. And instead I'll use the offset X property to move our layer all the way to the left. If we zoom in a bit, I'll do the same for the second knob. I'll reset rotate and then I'll move the offset X to a positive value, making sure it aligns to the right hand side. I'll keep the rest of these settings as they are for now. So we can preview this to get a better understanding of how loop works. So we see that the knobs now correctly animate to their respective positions, but the looping is instant. For a more natural feel, we would like to set the type to mirror on both of these layers. And if we jump back into the preview, you can see that they now bounce back and forth. Now, because they represent sliders, we can use a different transition like a spring curve. And I'll apply the same spring curve to the other layer as well. And now we can jump back to the preview again. So this is feeling a bit better, but it's way too fast. So there are two things we can do. First, we'll decrease the stiffness value of our springs, making it a bit smoother. 
And if we give that a quick preview, that's feeling a little bit better already. And the second thing we can do is add a short delay between each loop. I'll add a delay of 0.5 seconds. And there we go. You can use the loop effect to add all sorts of playful animations to your website in just a few clicks. Next, let's have a look at the press effect. I'll select the layer over here and I'll add a press effect. It defaults to setting scale to 0.9, meaning it will work really nicely in combination with the hover effect out of the box. I'll also set rotate to minus 90 and we can tweak the transition a little bit. So as soon as I click or press down onto the layer, it animates to our press effect. And as soon as I release the click or on mouse up, it animates back to its original state. Finally, let's have a look at how we can combine all four effects onto a single layer. So here I'll add one of each effect. For the loop one, I'll go ahead and set the time to two seconds, but I'll keep the default rotation. For the drag effect, I'll set freeform to no. This allows me to define a section to serve as the drag constraints. The parent layer of the pinwheel is defined as a section called card. And by referencing it in the drag effect, we can make sure that the pinwheel cannot be dragged or tossed outside of the card. With momentum set to yes, our draggable layer will have some simulated physics. It will take our dragging velocity into account, meaning we can toss the layer around within our card. If you drag or toss a layer outside of its constraints, it will quickly animate back to its actual constraints. With the transition property here, you can customize that transition. So this layer has all four effects applied. It gets upscaled on hover, downscaled on press, it infinitely rotates, and it is draggable within our card. Let's have a look at the final result. I'll scroll down to the final card, and you can see it scales up on hover, it scales down on press, it infinitely loops around, and I can both drag and toss it around within our card. I can throw it into any corner, for example, and it will nicely bounce off of the sides using the transition we defined earlier. Framer is also smart about which default cursors it assigns with layers that have effects. For example, if you have a draggable layer, we give it a grab cursor on hover and a grabbing cursor while you're dragging the layer. These new effects make it so much easier to add high fidelity animations and interactions to your websites in Framer. They are very performant, yet easy to add and customize, and we're super excited to share them with you. That's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more updates coming soon.